So it is a hot, muggy, miserable day in Chicago. And what better opportunity to talk about um, Agricole rums from the French Caribbean. In particular, we're talking about rums from Guadalupe. Now, uh, I think generally if people know uh, rums at all in the U.S., they're going to be kind of hopefully, hopefully a little bit vaguely familiar with rums from Martinique, which is the big famous uh, agricultural producing, producing island. They even have their own AOC. Um, Guadalupe is a little bit different. Um, the, the, the AOC for Martinique is very tightly controlled. You have to follow some very specific rules to make your, your stuff. Uh, Guadalupe is, is much more freewheeling in, in how they do things, which can produce some absolutely magnificent results and some maybe not so magnificent results. Um, it's a little bit the Wild West over there. So I thought we would try two uh, that I was interested in and uh, you know, give them some reviews. That is the BL and this is Longto. So both of these uh, pretty much unaged. They haven't even seen time in steel or concrete or anything like that. Uh, all right, so starting off with, with uh, BL. Uh, I have a little bit of history with BL. So uh, back in the day when you could still ship little sample bottles from, um, from the British Isles uh, before you know Master Malt and the others stopped doing that, uh, I had myself a little sample bottle of this, this very stuff, the BL Blanc. Um, and just that, you know, three centiliters of stuff was enough for me to put this in my pantheon of best rum distilleries in the world. Um, this for me is, you know, royalty, rum royalty. Um, so I'm hoping the, the review kind of stands up to that. Uh, long, uh, so BL on, on Marie Galant in the sort of southeast of the Guadalupe Islands. And then you got, uh, uh, Longto here, which is a, uh, a distillery on the, the sort of one of the bigger islands, um, uh, Basterra, um, uh, which is on the sort of western side of Guadalupe. Um, so totally different, not totally different, but very different terroirs, uh, but both column distilled, both based in cane juice rather than molasses or cane syrup. Uh, so let's uh, let's give them a whirl. This this BL bottled at fifty nine percent alcohol by volume. So very strong. This a uh, long toe. This is this sixty two. Um, the sixty two, uh, which is bottled at a sixty two percent alcohol by volume, which is even stronger. Um, neither of the, these are available in the U.S. so far as I'm aware, which is very sad. More on that in a minute. Um, <laughs> starting with the BL, bottled probably circa twenty twenty. Absolutely beautiful and filthy at the same time. Gorgeous in its filth, if I can put it that way. Um, yeah, so you're getting, I mean, it, it, there's this gorgeous grapefruit, lemon, but then also like a citrus candy thing going on. Um, some dried flowers too, bergamot, you know, the, the, the uh, slightly more green um, aromatic oranges that they use for Earl, Earl Green gray tea. Um, but then like all that, that beautiful fruity citrus uh, candy note, the aromat those, those gorgeous aromatics are sort of countered by just tar and rock dust and Tons of mixed olives, seawater, um, not even nice seawater, like slightly dirty seawater that you're a little bit scared to, to, like, to swim in. Mixed herbs, um, tobacco, orientals, uh, the, the, the more citric tobaccos. Even like a cider apple note, like you, you, you have some cider apples and you, you're, they're kind of rotting on you. That, like rotting apples, that's kind of the nose here. Um, and just mud, uh, but like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's mud mixed with citrus and rock candy. I don't know how, to, how else to do this. And there's, there's a little bit of a minty thing here, like the, like the little red and white mints, you know those things? There's a little bit of that in here on the nose. 
God, that's lovely. I mean, it's um, one like one of my favorite distillate noses ever, ever. Like this is this is at the top for me. And this isn't even like a like special, but like you can buy this in Europe for about thirty bucks, and it's a it comes in a liter bottle. This is not, you know, some special magical high mark bottling or anything like that. This is just stuff you can buy in Guadalupe or, you know, a, 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 an average liquor store in Paris for nothing. And it smells like this on the palate. So the, the, the red and white mint thing, the little round after dinner mints, that's much stronger on the palate than it is on the nose. So you're getting that, you're getting the, the citrus elements, the tar again, actually kind of follows from the nose nicely, just with slightly different emphases. Lime this time, um, but also the grapefruit and, and the lemon are in there too. Not, well, I was going to say black pepper. It's more white pepper this time. Um, fla something floral, but not even, like more like a flower eau de vie. Like if, if you could distill your flowers, you, this is kind of the nose, the, uh, the taste you would get. Um, uh, kind of like a, t t a tobacco note, but it's more like an, like an entire tobacco aging barn. So like an, like an old 19th century tobacco barn complete with leaves but also the the saturated the wood saturated with like tobacco goodness you're going to eat all of that um some apricot some dried apricot olives again seawater again seaweed um bergamot again that sort of uh aromatic orange and um, a little bit of fresh rubber in there, which I don't normally associate with agricoles. That's some, that's a note I usually get more with, uh, like aged, um, pot still molasses based rums, but here it is, you know, in, in BL, um, and very minerally there, there's like, again, that rock dust kind of note, Jesus. Fantastic distillate. Fantastic. I mean, this is. I mean, I mean, there are so many distilleries in the world which are better known that wish they could have something coming off the still that was this good. Um, tremendous. I'm gonna add some water to this, and we'll come back to it in a bit. That's, it. That's four squirts. Is that enough? Nope. I'm gonna go to half. Another, another one. Just to be sure, that has character. Uh, that has a ton of character. All right, um, moving on. So the Longato is in the death seat, unfortunately, after one of my favorite distillates in the world. Get some water. It is very nippy, but... Um, um, Jesus, I mean, the, the explosion of flavors on the palate is unbelievable. Um, very, very good. Very good. Um, and a little longer toe. So again, um, not, uh, uh, not Marie Gallant, which is the, the island with, I think, the majority of the distilleries. Um, this is uh, Basseterre. 62% ABV, and you can kind of tell it's a little bit nippy on the nose. So the, the shocking thing about this initially is it smells extremely Mexican. This this reminds me a lot of the Chorandas I've had from uh, Michoacan, as well as the uh, some of the rums I've had from Oaxaca. It has this, that, that same kind of raw characteristic. I wouldn't be surprised if Longato was using, um, if not wild fermentation, then at least, you know, some kind of, um, you know, 
some in, in local environmental yeast to get it to, to, to act like this. So you're getting pizza sauce. You're getting you're getting um, uh, some very tomatoey, but like cooked tomatoes. F tons of fresh mint. So this is not like fake mint. This is not you know like like the the Briar's ice cream mint. This is like real. You grew some mint mint in a garden and you kind of pulled out the leaves. Um, fennel, definitely some lemon lime, brine, olives. Again, those are those are very common rum notes in general, but especially in Niagara Falls, you tend to get them. Um, little allspice, little uh, hints of like a uh, Jamaican jerk chicken in there. A little allspice. Um, there's a peppery note, but it's it's uh, it's more like pink peppercorns than traditional sort of black peppercorns or anything like that. And um, and a slightly spicy, plummy note, which which I would call perique. Perique, my favorite kind of tobacco, one of my favorite notes to get in a spirit. Um, and there it is. And I'm always happy when I get when I get perique. So this is my smile. Um, God, I love how these things smell. The noses are just are just terrific. On the palate. Oh, okay. Much sweeter than it is on the nose, and actually even sweeter than it, than the BL was. Um, so those tomatoey herbaceous notes—they're still kind of there, but they kind of moved to the background in favor of much more of a straightforward cane juice, rock candy kind of characteristic. Um, so yeah, cane candy. Because it kind of flanked by. Fresh mint, peppermint, a little bit of sun-dried tomato, um, fennel. So there's a little bit of a hippie toothpaste component. Like you, you went to your your Whole Foods and you bought one of the the sort of you know uh, fennel and and mint-based toothpaste. Um, lime, lime juice. Really more lime candy and a little bit of like like a kiwi candy too, alongside that. Dried grass, actually more overtly grassy than the BL was. I wasn't getting any grass there. And that pink peppercorn note. Um, it's very nice. Uh, there's a big gap between the, the nose, which smells very, you know, green and vegetal and tomato-y, and the palate, which is very nice, sweet, soft, still peppery, still characterful. But, you know, relatively easy to take. Still nippy, obviously, but, you know, that's that's why there's a glass of water. Two, three, four, five. Let's start there. Alrighty, um, both of these are very, very, very good. At the moment, the BL is kind of ahead, just because, and I hope it's not just my taste. I just, something about this this character of just dirty, 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 and at the same time, like gorgeous and crystalline, totally appeals to me. Um, but uh, I, I also just think this is a hair bit ahead. Which is not to say this is bad. This is good. This the longer toe is good. Um, okay, going back to the BL with some water on the nose. Okay, this is suddenly oh, I just splashed a bunch all over myself. Mmm, BL. Um, it becomes this uh, like this smoky, not not peaty. Like this is you know plastic smoke or something. So plastic smoke, tarry, like stone fruit eau de vie thing. Um, citrus is still in there. It's 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 dusty. It's dense. There's some ting. The um you know the uh, the grapefruit soda. Actually, a lot of ting. This smells extremely interesting. It's it's a. Uh, 
there's a nervousness to this. There's a, there's a minerality, a, 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 an acidity. Um, I, I don't, you know, it's different from what it is when it's neat, but I don't think it's lost anything. And in some ways this, as weird as it sounds, this reminds me of like a young, a really young, uh, bo like good Bordeaux Blanc, like a, a Pessac or something. Um, something that just needs to go down for a few years first. Um, uh, it's got that nervousness to it, which I love. On the palate. Magical. Oh God, that's good. Terrific, smoky, like plastic smoke, but also like pipe smoke, little, little cigar smoke, Dominican cigar smoke, um, floral cigar smoke, peppery, tarry, um, olivey, citrus, uh, Yeah, the citrus is coming out to play. The, the grapefruit, the, the bergamot, the, the lemon, the lime, it's all there. And it's all just covered in this gross stuff that I love. God almighty, this is good. Um, I'm gonna give this 88 points out of 100, which I think is the highest score I've given to a, a Agricole Blanc ever. I, someone check me on that, but I think this is, I mean, I love, like it isn't, it doesn't quite have the depth and the to get, to get into the '90s, but God, this is for something fresh off the still, like that is not, you know, something you know, some special magical um, eau de vie that costs a couple of hundred bucks. This is amazing. Um, the fact that this is not really available in the States is an act of absolute negligence on the part of American importers. Why can't I buy this in the U.S.? Jesus Christ. This is terrific. Um, this is terrific. This is, this is the only bottle of BL I've ever tried. And again, this, this block, this you know, stuff that you can buy for a couple of euros in, in a supermarket probably is, you know, put, puts it in rum royalty. It, this, it really is that good. It's that good. This is up there with Hamden and Foursquare and name your rum distillery. This is, this is up there. Um, and leave it at that. Uh, 88 points out of a hundred. Jesus. Moving on back to the, uh, long toe. On the nose. Um, maybe a little bit more kind of smoky sweet. It sort of uh, brings out those aspects of it, which which you expect when you when you proof something down. Otherwise, not a whole lot of development. Still on very much on like pizza sauce and like herbaceous, delicious minty herbaceousness. Uh, maybe some um, more basil and uh, rosemary in there as well, along with the mint. But not a whole lot of development on the nose, but that's okay because it was a terrific nose to begin with. On the palate. Kind of the same story. Gets more plastic smoky, but also campfire smoky. Um, pine smoke as well. Um, so you're getting a little bit more herbaceous uh, smoke coming out, but still very sweet on the palate. Has that nice mix of, of citrus and mintiness and, um, you know, kind of the hippie toothpaste elements, which I love. Again, doesn't develop much, but it's so good as a distillate, it doesn't really need to. This is really well, well made. And it is, I mean, in terms of what I'm getting, it is basically a, a cousin to Mexican rum. I mean, the, the real Mexican rum, not the, not the crap. This is the, the cane juice based stuff, the Torondas and so on. Um, this is kind of in that, in that, in that same flavor zone. Um, 
So if you like those, you will probably like this. And if you don't like those, you'll probably not like this. I don't think that will change your mind. Um, I'll give this an 86 plus out of 100. It is very, very, very good. But sadly, it is. it just happened to show up to a competition with this little BL here, which is actually cheaper, considerably cheaper, um, at, which is just kind of overshadowing it a little bit. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be... Hmm, how do I put this? I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't be surprised if Longto was wild fermenting or doing something close to that, something, you know, with, with yeast from the environment. Gil comes across as a little bit more, um, a little bit more buttoned up. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they were using kind of their own cultivated yeast. Um, but the, the quality of the, of, of the stills and the quality of the, the raw materials going into it, I mean, speaks for itself. Um, both of these are quite good. And more, more uh, rums from Guadalupe really should be available in the U.S. So if you're an importer and you're watching this, bring these in. Like, just do it. Like, like I'll buy them. There are a lot of people that will buy them because the quality is there. It's there. Um, thanks a lot for watching and cheers.